السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome, dear brothers and sisters from all around the world, in a new program which is named Flashback. In this program, we're going to talk about stories from the past, short story about different topics that are very important in Islam, like repentance, like asking for forgiveness, like righteousness, and all other topics. As we know that in the Quran, Allah told Prophet Muhammad, which means that Allah ordered Prophet Muhammad to say the stories to the people for them, maybe they may reflect and ponder. And by this, we take this analogy and we give back to the past, to the first three centuries of the past uh, generations of Islam to learn from them and to project the lessons learned from the past on today's uh, life and current affairs. And in the first episode, we're going to talk about righteousness and its effect and direct effect on the people to like have the blessings on the uh, offsprings that are coming after your death. Because, of course, we uh, are afraid that maybe we, we, if we leave our children, that maybe they're going to be poor. We have to maybe work uh, extra uh, times and maybe we can waste our time and so on and so forth. But before this, before we know the story, today's story, as a flashback to get to the past, we would like to welcome our permanent guest, Sheikh Rifat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, uh, Brother Omar. Thank you. Thank you for We're hosting. very happy to see you. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure to be with you again, alhamdulillah. Thank you, it's my honor. Alhamdulillah. And Thank it's you. really important that, as we said in the beginning, as an introduction, that when we get back to the past and the lessons of the past, that some people, they, they see like, they, these are relics and historic things that we shouldn't even mention. Some people, they attack Islam through this, that you're just uh, being happy for the, the past uh, discoveries and the past, uh, you can say, achievements. But what about nowadays? So that's why we would like to do this link. And before that, before we say the story that we have, we would like to touch upon this because this is the first introductory um, episode that we have. Uh, what's the importance of learning from the past lessons? Uh, so they usually say, who, Bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa wa rasulillah. Uh, usually it is well known that is those who don't have past, they don't have future and mm. they don't have present. So it's always important for us to look back to our uh, previous generations and our teachers and our scholars and uh, the stories from before and as you mentioned earlier in the ayah Allah the Almighty said so relate the story so they may reflect mm -hmm. so it is very important always to hear about those who came before us in order to 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 benefit from what they faced because definitely they were human beings so they lived the same life that we lived mm -hmm and they had the same issues that we have in our life. They got married and they fall into problems and they have uh, different tests and trials they faced in their life. They had children and they had everything that we do. So that the, we, we definitely we will learn from our past because this is something really important to, to correct ourselves and we don't do the same mistakes that, we, that they, they fall in before previously. So it is very important for us to read the history of the back uh, of, the, of those great people, especially the prophets' stories and the, the companions' stories, <laughs> the great scholars' stories, and the great righteous people's stories, so that we can get the benefit of that mm -hmm. as we have in our story today. Mm -hmm. That's really amazing, Sheikh Khaled. So wha what story do we have today about righteousness? Yeah, usually, uh, and, and you will find this always, that the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he starts a speech, he will always encourage us and, uh, and advise us to have righteousness, mm -hmm. to be righteous, to fear Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is very important. And if we don't advise each other to be righteous, there will be a gap always. So it is always a good advice to tell me and I tell you and tell the brothers and to talk about righteousness, to tell the people, to just to remind the people to be, to fear Allah Azza wa Jal and to keep their duties to Allah and to respect whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has given them, to respect the life and the time and to respect the people who are there in living with them wherever we are. So it is essential part in our life to be righteous and we are righteous to only Allah Azza wa Jal. We are righteous for one reason, to have success in our life mm -hmm. and to see that success affecting our children and affecting our businesses and affecting the lifestyle that we live in. Mm -hmm. If you wanted success, just be righteous, mm -hmm. easy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَةً If you are righteous, Allah will give you a way out for all, for all the problems that you face. Many people usually 
complain about the problems and the issues that they see in their lifetime. And this is something that is really is, is, is happening to everybody among us, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is just be righteous and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will solve your problem. Mm -hmm. Allah promised that. If we are sincere, if we are good to our brothers and sisters, if we are good to our parents, that is righteousness. Mm -hmm. If we are actually uh, doing the obligations that Allah has commanded us to do, that is righteousness. If we stay away of all evil things, that is righteousness. So righteousness is easy. And if we are pleased with whatever Allah has given to us, that is righteousness. Mm -hmm. And if we are righteous, in the end, Allah will solve our problems and Allah will provide us with all things that we wish to have. Moreover than that is that Allah Azza wa Jal will, will, will take care of our children afterwards. Mm -hmm. So the story that we have today is that this a great scholar called Muqatil ibn Sulaiman. He came once and he attended the uh, the beginning of the of the of the of the of the new era of Al Khalifa Al Abbasi Al Mansur, uh, the Abbas the Abbasini uh, Khalifa. He was just receiving his 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 uh, new position to be the Amir Al Mu'minin. So when he saw uh, Muqatil Ibn Sulaiman, he asked him, uh, "Ya Ya Imam." advise us, give us advice. So Muqatil ibn Sulaiman told him something really amazing. He said to him, you want me to tell you something that I heard or something that I saw? Mm -hmm. So he told him definitely what you saw. So he said to him, I have seen two groups, two different groups. One group is the children of uh, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Khalifa, the previous Amir al muminin Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he left behind him 11 children, mashallah, 11 children. You know, nowadays <laughs> we are actually complaining about one or two kids yes. <laughs> and our <laughs> life is difficult. So he left behind him 11 uh, sons. So when he left behind him 11 sons, look at his wealth after he left all that big uh, number of children, mashallah. So he said he left for them 18 dinar, mm -hmm. just 18 dinar. So what they did, they, his funeral and his, uh, his, uh, his, his debts, was just like nine of them. So nine of the 18 were given just for the funeral and for other things, five and four. So after that, how much left for the kids? It's only nine dinars. So the nine dinars were distributed for the, for the 11 children, subhanAllah. So afterwards, he said on the other side, on the other side, uh, uh, Salman ibn Abdul Malik, he left behind him also 11 sons. But he left for each one of them 1,000 of 1,000, uh, which is million, mm -hmm. million dinar of gold for each one of them. Mm -hmm. Besides the palaces, the, the, the houses that he left, the gardens, whatsoever, right? The businesses that he left for them, he left pure money for them, 1 million dinar of gold for each one of them. So he said, I have witnessed, my eyes, I have witnessed the children of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, mm -hmm. one of them, just one of them, he was able to give 1,000 1, horse for the, for the Muslims for one of the battles. He provided the Muslim people with about 1,000 of horses or camels for them to use in the battle. He battlefield. became rich again. So he became rich, mm -hmm. the son of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. His dad actually left for him just like less than one dinar. Less, less than one dinar if we distribute the nine to 11. So on the other side, he said, I have witnessed one of Salman ibn Abdul Malik children uh, begging people in the street. Oh. The one who was left with one million dinar of gold. Mm. He said, I have witnessed the two situations. So what is the difference here? Children of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the righteous man, the righteous Khalifa, the righteous Amir al muminin he has definitely taught his kids the beauty of this deen, alhamdulillah. He was not caring about leaving like a big nice house for them <laughs> or a big wealth for them, he left for them taqwa. And that's what he said when he was asked, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, ماذا تركت لأولادك? What did you left? What did you leave for your kids after you? He said, تركت لهم تقوى الله, تقوى الله. I have left for them the righteousness and the to be uh, God-fearing uh, children. So I have left that for them. So he said, if they were righteous, Allah will provide them. Mm -hmm. And if the children are righteous, Allah will provide them if they are among the Salihin. And if they were not among the Salihin, I will not leave for them any mm -hmm. wealth that will help them to do evil things. 
okay? Mm -hmm. On the other side, Salman left 11 children, for each one, one million. And the Imam, he said, I have witnessed one of them digging in the street. Oh. So that's what we leave behind us, is taqwa. And that will benefit our children, bi And of course, that teaches us also, Sheikh Rifat, the importance of when you care about permissible means of provision. Like, because of course, he's a ruler, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz is a ruler. And by maybe, the, like anybody who sees like through mm. history, most of the rulers, they wouldn't care about which like uh, source of money is. Yeah. Like I'm the president, I'm the king, and my money is actually the same like <laughs> money of the Yeah, country. imagine that's, that's Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, the Khalifa of the Muslim. He's a ruler, he's a president, he's not just a president, he's a prince of the believers, he actually control, look how many, how many countries around and how many states around and how many, look at the glory of the Muslim Ummah at the time of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz, how much he can control and how much it treasures under his hand. Mm -hmm. But though he had that, he was less than anyone else from the people. So this is a good, uh, is a, it's a good for, for, for people who are in power anywhere at any time to take care of this amana that they have under them. Because Allah Azza wa is watching Subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's like you know the peop the people what we will take with us mm -hmm. what we will take with us as a, as 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 people who live in this world look at al khalifa umar once he had one of his daughters uh, who was actually complaining to him she said to him dad this is the eid is coming and all the children got new clothes and i didn't get a, a new clothes similarly her brothers everybody was the same having the same concern we don't have new clothes like uh, the rest of the people. So the father, he felt sorry for his daughter, so he went out to Baytul Mal, the, the treasurer, the, to, to the treasurer of the Muslim community, and he asked him if he can take in advance his salary for the next month. <laughs> Imagine who's asking the, the Khalifa of the Muslimin. Khalifa of the Muslimin, Amir al Mu'minin Umar, he can order and things will happen. But he requested from the treasurer if he can take an advance one month ahead from his salary. So the treasurer said to him, yeah, Amir al-Mu'mini, no problem. But give me a certificate that you will live until the next <laughs> month and that you will work for that money. So فَبَكَى Omar. So Omar uh, ibn Abdul Aziz, radiallahu anhu, Amir al muminin he cried for what he heard. This is the amana. So he came back to his children empty of everything. So he said, so the, when they saw him, what happens that? So he said to him, to, to his children, what if you are patient with your father and all of you together go to Jannah? Or your dad will do something, something else and, and be banished in the hereafter. So that is the beauty here of a man who is in a charge of something and he's a president of something and in the same time he's fearing Allah Azza wa Jal and he does not assault or take something that is not for him to take just yes. because of his power. That's really amazing. And we'd like also, be, we're going to take a short break, but before this we'd like to ask, does that mean that we shouldn't care about leaving something for our kids not to go and beg in the streets or to protect them? Like because some people may can take it to another extreme, but we're going to take a short break before this. So the brothers and sisters, we're going to come back to flashback to continue the beautiful story of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, dear brother and sister. We're talking about righteousness and the story of Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. May Allah be pleased with him. And welcome back, Shaykh Rifat. I'm very happy uh, to continue this with you, Shaykh Rifat. And the point of the question before the break, like what about if some people, they say, okay, I'm going to learn from this story that I don't have to earn uh, money because I'm just teaching my kids to, to learn righteousness and to fear Allah and to worship Allah in the best way and form. So what's the response to that? Uh, definitely some people will say uh, that is you know uh, I just need to to pray and do my ibadah and focus on teaching my kids no one will say that mm -hmm. definitely the best person is the one who is able to have balance in his life he can work hard and and gain money and make 
living for his family and his children to have a nice house, to have a car, to have a successful business. But the main point here is that I fear Allah Azza wa Jalla and have righteousness in what I have. So if I am a successful businessman, I will fear Allah to make sure what I earn is halal, to make sure that I give Allah Azza wa Jalla his rights from that wealth that I'm getting, and also to make sure that I have time for my children. Some mm -hmm. people usually, they have too much too much work to do and very busy they travel a lot and in the same time they neglect their children and as a result of that the children are raised in a in a way that are completely away from righteousness so those kids will be affected afterwards and their life will be miserable mm -hmm. so the main thing is that i have balance i work hard I make money, I make wealth, I earn, and I have a nice home, nice car, but in the same time, I will make sure that I please Allah Azza wa in whatever I have. Mm -hmm. So I will balance my life, I will be very good to my family, to my children, to my parents, to my community, mm -hmm. not to focus in dunya and leave akhirah. Mm -hmm. I have to have balance in between both so that I can be successful person in dunya and in akhirah. Definitely Allah Azza wa loves the people who actually have a, a higher hand than the ones who have lower hand, meaning that I give not to ask or to big people. So if we look at the case of Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, he was a very successful person. That's why he was the Khalifa of the believers. He was the prince. He was the Emir of the Mu'mineen. He was leading the Ummah at the time. And the best time for the Muslim Ummah ever after the glory time of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, wa Umar, wa Khulafa came afterwards, if like years after, came Umar ibn Abdul Aziz time. That's one of the best times. Why? Because there is a successful man. If he was not successful, he would not reach to that position and he would not be loved by everyone in the Ummah. So he was loved by everyone, even us now sitting, talking about him. We love him. So that is the life of Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz عنه, who was really a great example for anyone to follow. So I wish that our rulers and our presidents and those who are actually taking power of the Muslim countries and anywhere to take that as an example. We see actually similar situation in some Western countries where the presidents, they just live with it like the people living. There is no difference. They can walk in the street like anybody else. So this is what we tell our brothers and sisters to be humble and to fear Allah Azza wa Jal, to work hard, to be successful. We tell our children and we teach them be successful. But remember, there is Allah Azza wa Jal who is watching you. So so be righteous and be a person who is actually obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal, obedient to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and in the same time successful. Uh, Islam encourages us to be, to be successful. Actually, if we hear our Azan, just our Azan is calling us for success. Hayya ala al-falah, hayya ala al-falah. We hear that five times a day. So Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed us with this great ni'mah that is to be successful and in the same time you are a, 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 a person who submit to Allah Azza wa Jal and who do the righteous deeds that make him closer to Allah. All that will benefit us in our studies, in our businesses, in our wills, in our stores, in our homes, in our children after we die, during our life. That is the life of righteousness. SubhanAllah. And that reminded me, Shaykh Rifat, of this story in Surah Al-Kahf, the cave. Right. Also about the protection of a treasure. Exactly. And we know by this, of course, it's similar yeah, to the protection Allah, so and it's a treasure. Um, so he's rich. He was e rich. Exactly. Allah Azza wa Jal has taken care of a treasure of two orphans just because their parents were righteous. So Allah Azza wa Jal, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as in Surah Al-Kahf, فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَ أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَ كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ So Allah Azza wa Jal wanted to take care of the, of the treasure a, tre a, tre a treasure of these two two orphans because their, their, their parents were uh, mm -hmm. so because of the righteousness of the parents Allah Azza wa Jal has made uh, take, taking care of the of the treasure of these uh, uh, the treasure of these two two orphans mm -hmm. also Allah said that uh, an ayah in the Quran that actually directly talk about this that is righteousness mm -hmm. will benefit the children mm -hmm. after death so many of us I'm um, actually like me or you or anyone, we worried about our kids. What will happen for them in the mm -hmm. future? It's not, your it's not our problem in the future. The, it's <laughs> our problem what we have in, in our life now is to take care of our children, to raise them, to advise them, to be a friend for them, to talk with them, and to do our best as believers of the righteousness, of the fear of Allah. If we did that, Allah will take care of them. And this is what Allah said in Surah An-Nisa. <laughs> 
ذرية ضعافا خافوا عليهم فليتقوا الله وليقولوا قولا سديدا If we really are worried about our kids and this is the worry is normal Everybody is worried about his children I'm worried about my children education about, about, I, I'm worried about my, my kids religious education religion that they, they should take care of their prayers, their manners that this is something everybody is worried so if I'm worried what Allah said Allah Azza wa Jal said uh, just let them fear Allah and be righteous and Allah will take care of, the, of their children and their offspring and those who will come after and it's always good to think of your offspring and your children who will come after you and that is what Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam he, he made a dua قَالَ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِي and from my offspring, from my kids and my grandchildren and he even made dua ask Allah to send them later a messenger who will teach them the kitab and the hikmah so it is always for us to, to make dua for our children and to care about what we do because what we do now it will definitely affect our kids later and if we did wrong definitely our kids will not be in a good position and if we did good that will affect our children Allah will protect them Allah will save them Allah Azza wa Jal will make them in a, in a, in a successful uh, living bi mm -hmm. uh, and if we do any, 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 any other wrong definitely this will make them in, in, in the wrong position so what we do we fear Allah Azza wa Jal and we establish for our kids what we can do we're from the right sources with the right way and we fear Allah in whatever we have whether it is business or job or whatsoever Allah has given to us. So what about Sheikh Rifat, like the point of translating the word taqwa to just fear? Is it just fear or does this word like mean also other things? Like because some people they just reduce the meaning to this that they, they are afraid all the time and ah. sometimes it paralyzes them. It makes them like feel like oh I'm afraid all the time I'm going to be punished. Um, I'm not going to be uh, happy at any moment and this is th the way of the Muslim. I have to be religious by this way. Ah, I see. SubhanAllah, actually, if we, if, we, if we come to the word taqwa itself, it's actually, it's an amazing word if we really understand and we act upon that word. It's not, it's not just about the fear. Mm -hmm. You know, we worship Allah Azza wa Jal with three main things. Love, love, fear, and hope. Mm -hmm. So we have to balance between these three. We cannot only worship Allah with fear. No one will worship uh, or, or do something if he is, is, is only have the fearing. No, we worship Allah Azza wa Jal with the love and the hope. Mm -hmm. Love Him Azza wa Jal because He's our creator and our sustainer. And He's the one who's blessing us with everything. And we fear Him, we fear His punishment. We fear that if we do wrong, then we will be punished in the hereafter. And we hope, we always hope that Allah Azza wa Jal will give us and provide us. And we hope that He Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will allow us to be in Jannah in the hereafter. So the fear and, and, and the word taqwa itself, it means that the person to keep his duties to Allah, to be obedient to Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to stay away of any evil or any perceptions that Allah and His Messenger said to us, do not come near it or not, do not do it. Mm -hmm. And in the same time that we are pleased, uh, we have what we call rida. Mm -hmm. we, have the, we are pleased with whatever Allah Azza wa Jal is giving to us. Whatever in our destiny Allah made it, we accept it and we are satisfied. We don't say why and why not. Mm -hmm. We don't have that. So we always are pleased with whatever Allah Azza wa Jal has given to us. That is what it meant, taqwa. Sayyidina Umar, he explained the word taqwa also. That is, imagine if you are walking in, in a place where you have thorns and uh, lots of dirt. What you do, definitely you will pull up your, your thawb, your clothes, and you will try to, mm -hmm. to step one step here, one step there in order to avoid any harm from the, the, the place that you are passing by. To be cautious. So that is taqwa, just to be cautious, mm -hmm. right? So this is Alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa has given us the explanation. And in many verses in the Quran, Allah has commanded us to be among those who are al muttaqin And he has explained to us that the ones who are muttaqin are the ones who are successful. Inna lil muttaqina mafaza bi'iznillah. So this is something that is for us to, to consider and to remember that our time here is very short and very soon we are coming back to Allah Azza wa Jal. So we need to be always ready at all times. And that reminded me, Shaykh Rifat, of the, like, the names and attributes of Allah. That all of them they can be divided into the meaning of Kamal al hub and Kamal al zul The complete love and complete submission and humility. Right. And this maybe can be a summary of how the person can be a righteous person. By understanding who Allah is. And by knowing His names. Now, if I'm afraid of something, if I know that Allah is capable of doing it, 
anything. على كل على كل شيء قدير. That means okay, I'm not going to be afraid because and everything is written and I believe that Allah knows everything. This is the the knowledge of Allah. So all of these things will make me understand like who Allah is and will make me calm down. I will feel peace at heart and then action will be easy. If I have to worship and I have to have uh, obligations and mandatory stuff, now they're not going to be heavy on my shoulder mm-hmm. when you understand. So what do you think about this approach, Sheikh Rifat? Like understanding who Allah is and then by this is going to feed the heart of yes. how to be righteous. Yes, getting to know Allah Azza wa Jal, it's a great blessing for, for the people so that they will know what it what what to do in order to be a taqi. Mm-hmm. You know, in some in our conversation, our normal conversation, if you talk with someone, you'll say, Ya akhi taqillah, Ya akhi be a righteous person or fear Allah. So here it means that the person know that there is Allah, mm-hmm. there is a creator, there is someone who is who is who's all who who's who's powerful than you, who's capable of doing everything. If you if you oppress me now, Mm-hmm. There is God, Allah Azza wa Jal, who is Shadid al Iqab. He will punish you if you oppress people, if you if you do wrong to the people. Uh, if I am worried about my rizq and about my provision, Allah is a razaq. So I'm not gonna be worried or paranoid because of the shortage that I have. I will do my best, I will work hard, and my razaq is Allah Azza wa Jal, who is taking care of me and who's providing me. That is righteousness. Knowing Allah's names, knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal is always there and He's taking care of me and my family and supporting me. This way I will be inshallah in a safe side and I will have the meaning reach to my heart and I'm okay to take care of my children and not to worry about them afterwards. Amazing. That's really amazing and really was very happy to have this episode. The first episode was very strong and we, re- the, the beautiful thing that we started by the maybe the pillar of everything. If a person is righteous and everything is going to be easy right. afterwards inshallah. Thank you so much Sheikh Rafat for joining Jazak us. Jazak Allah we hope to see you I'm, again. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be with you. Thank you. May Allah bless pleasure. you Omar. Thank you. Jazak Allah bless you too. Um, and thank you dear um, brothers and sisters for joining us in the first episode of Flashback. And stay tuned until next time. We're going to talk about other stories, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.